Right, so a uh, couple of short, well, hopefully quite short revision videos on the organic mechanisms. This is probably the one you least need to worry about because it should be extremely easy. Nonetheless, let's just have a quick look at nucleophilic substitution. So uh, this is something that happens to haloalkanes, the way that we've studied it. There are three different nucleophiles which can come along and uh, react with uh, a haloalkane. Uh, there they are. You can have a hydroxide ion, a cyanide ion, or an ammonia molecule and uh, don't forget your definition of a nucleophile you might need that it's an electron pair donor it's nothing to do with redox uh, it's just you know that's what it is so nucleophiles form coordinate bonds to electron deficient centers basically and all of the electron deficient centers that we have to look at are carbons bonded to bromine uh, sorry bonded to a group 7 atom in the context of this particular mechanism so uh, a curly arrow from the lone pair on the nucleophile to a carbon that holds a group 7 atom, it's usually Br, uh, causing the CBr bond to break. So um, there it is, that's all there is to the first one. Um, that gives us this. Now obviously that CH3 group hasn't been affected, there's been no arrows going anywhere near it. There aren't any arrows around the two CH bonds that I've just drawn because they don't break. This arrow, the first one I drew then, this lone pair on the hydroxides uh, outer shell um, is forming a bond with the O. So that lone pair is now a bond uh, there. Uh, the O holds the H. I'll just draw it in display style by expanding out the OH for what it's worth. This CBR bond's broken, uh, so the BR is no longer part of the molecule. More than that, um, if you imagine that this pair of this bond here is a pair of electrons that was shared between C and BR, uh, then BR, you could imagine, gets its electron back from that bond plus the one that you, you could assume carbon put in. So it's now been given an extra electron. Now, I'm only going to say this once. Strictly speaking, that BR already had three lone pairs on it, and now it's up to four. It's completely by the by, really. We don't normally draw those lone pairs because we haven't got a coming from them. But it's bromide now because it's got, well, eight electrons in its outer shell. It's a group seven atom. It's just been given an extra one, which is what you could, again, could imagine is carbon's investment in that bond. If you want to practice this, then uh, pause the video now and do uh, the next two um, on bromopro bromoethane there. Else, I'm going to quickly run through and uh, and do them anyway. So here we go. Now, just for the sake of speed and space on the page, uh, it's going to be a bit messy now. But I'll actually just write on top of the mechanism I've already done. So if cyanide came along instead, the mechanism would look exactly the same. Obviously, I'm using the green pen this time. I appreciate this is a bit weird. Uh, forms a bond, breaks exactly the same. And then, rather than having uh, an alcohol form, which is what hydroxide would give you, uh, because we're going through cyanide, a few important points to be made here. We've grown the carbon skeleton. Um, now, it's now uh, three carbons long. So whereas that there is obviously ethanol from bromoethane, this is now prop something or other. And more specifically, it's propane nitrile. Don't forget about how you name these things. The focus for these revision videos is not naming. The ammonia mechanism is a little bit more awkward. Let me draw the final product, but then I'll go and do the mechanism for this one. So if a haloalkane reacts with ammonia, it is also the nucleophilic substitution reaction. It has an extra step, which I'll show you in a second to remind you of. Uh, and it's worth you having to go for yourselves before you see the answer. But the final product there from an NH3 that gets added is an NH2 group added on where the BR was. So we're making an amine there and uh, the preferred name for this one will be ethyl amine, which can also then act as a nucleophile because it's got a lone pair on an N, so it can also be an electron pair donor in further substitution reactions. Now, let's have a quick look at the mechanism for making an amine from a haloalkane by the reaction with ammonia. Uh, and again, uh, I encourage you to do it for yourself if you haven't already. We'll stick with bromoethane as our haloalkane this time. There it is. I'm just gonna make sure my H's don't look like K's because otherwise we could be losing marks in the test. That'd be no good. So as before, um, the nucleophile comes along and forms a bond with the carbon which holds the group seven atom, um, causing the CBR bond to break. Uh, and there's that bond breaking. The electrons in the bond are now not a bond anymore. They're now localized in the outer shell of the BR. Um, the BR leaves as a bromide ion. Thing is, 
that's not the complete mechanism that gives us an intermediate this time so as before that CH3 on the end is completely unaffected as are these two CH bonds here because we haven't had any arrows coming um, from those bonds which would suggest they were breaking it was NH3 and so it still is an NH3 group attached now that catchy thing that it's just helpful to remember without having to overthink it in organic chemistry this does not apply for transition metals but in organic chemistry whenever you see an N with four bonds stick a plus on it I'm not going to go on about why that's justifiable now just do it it works there is a bromide around we don't really have to show it but I'll just confirm that it's there so at the minute what we've got is this uh, well it's not the final product that I drew a second ago I suppose we'd have to call this ethyl ammonium bromide uh, but it's an intermediate here's the complication here's the next thing that happens a second ammonia I'm choosing to use a different colored pen for a reason just to emphasize it's not the same one it can't be really at the end from the original ones there comes along and um, forms a bond with any one of those three H's on the NH3 plus group now for it to take a H the H has to uh, break off where it's currently attached so I'll show this NH bond breaking with an arrow going from it and it goes to the N plus there's usually not a mark for the correct final uh, product but I'm going to do it here anyway so we can make all the points so now we've got our uh, ethylamine formed correct and good that's what that's what we should have uh, there's a lone pair on the N we've had uh, this second NH3 come along um, there are its original three H's and it's taken on this fourth H relieving the NH3 plus group of it again whenever you see an N with a plus uh, sorry an N with four bonds stick a plus and there's a bromide ion floating around as well so the balanced equation for this reaction would look something like this CH3 CH2 Br plus two ammonias gives CH3 CH2 NH2 and ammonium bromide which is ionic NH4 Br the charge is balance brilliant um, now the focus here is mechanism so I'm not gonna there are all sorts of little side tangents we could go off on just want to really quickly but not like go all the way through it talk about how the amine product here could then act as a nucleophile itself so this is where further substitution comes along in fact there is one aside that really should be made here we can say that this first sorry just to go back for a moment we say that this first ammonia that comes along acts as a nucleophile it's an electron pair donor and typically that's to a carbon kicking off the reaction this NH3 is also obviously acting as an electron pair donor look there's the lone pair being donated to form a bond with that H but because it's specifically a hydrogen that it's taking and the hydrogen comes without any electrons the electrons go elsewhere um, this is acting as a base isn't it so uh, it, it is still being an electron pair donor but we don't call it a nucleophile because it's taking a H plus from something so that's a Lowry Bronsted base now onto what I just said we do uh, a bit about further substitution to finish this video um, so if we took our uh, ethyl amine product and uh, put that with some haloalkane or maybe there's an excess of haloalkane from the previous step and, and so it can just collide again then there's no reason why uh, a further reaction wouldn't take place almost made a fatal error there I'll just have to move it over here now I'm going to be uh, a little bit cheeky and use a different halo alkane just so you can see how things fit together so let's imagine that we started off with a nice pure sample of ethylamine and we put it with some bromomethane this time you can see I've just reduced the carbon chain by one it's the same mechanism as we've just done above okay in that we'll have a lone pair on the N uh, forming a bond with a carbon which holds a group 7 atom causing the group 7 atom to break off giving us the intermediate so here we'll have the CH3 CH2 group attached to the N which has those two H's on it but now also has this CH3 on it above yet again an N with four bonds that needs to be positively charged and there's a bromide ion knocking around to counteract that charge almost finished then something else would come along now I'm going to call it um, R3N ambiguous that could be ammonia it could be NH3 or it could be um, like ethylamine where two of the R's are a H and the others are something else an ethyl group it could be trimethylamine it could be anything that has an N dot dot 
and which isn't bonded to a carbonyl. So we're talking about amines here or, or ammonia. Anyway, something which can take it, which basically would be any um, anything that resembles ammonia or is an amine, primary, secondary or tertiary amine, uh, would then come along as before, pick off a H from the NH N plus group um, and, and off you go. At this point, because I've used a mixture of different carbon chains, I just wanted to, to have a chance to see this. Uh, the N, which was the amine functional group from our starting reactant, um, has now got, as we said, the methyl group from the thing it's just reacted with, the ethyl group that it came in with as ethyl amine at the beginning, and one of its H's. And it's slightly awkwardly drawn, it looks a bit unusual here, but it's still a fair enough representation of the structure. So what we'd have there is ethyl, methyl, that's alphabetical order, E then M, ethyl, methyl, amine. That can also still act as a uh, nucleophile. So that's got a lone pair on it. It can go again, add this carbon chain to it and, and have a H picked off and there you are. Now what you might want to look at if you're thinking, crikey, I've forgotten about all this further substitution, is how ultimately you'll end up with a quaternary ammonium salt. So here we've gone from ammonia to a primary amine, which was ethyl amine. Then we took that and imagined it reacting with something else, which has ultimately made it a secondary amine because it has two carbons attached to the N by the end of it. Uh, there it is, sorry, I'm pointing in the wrong place. That can then undergo further substitution. You could have three alkyl chains attached to the N, and then ultimately it will go this far where you get that kind of intermediate, except this time it's the final product. Once you get up to the quaternary level, quaternary level, um, there's no hydrogen to pick off. So again, just for example, we started with ethyl amine uh, at the beginning there, and then we imagine it reacting with a load of uh, methyl, uh, sorry, bromomethane. And uh, if that were to be the case, if there was an excess of bromomethane, then eventually we'd have three more methyl groups attached from them on the original ethyl amine. So don't worry that we've got this mixture of different carbon chains. That's just because of the, the difference that we had at the beginning. Again, just to make this point really, that all we're doing is taking something that's got an N dot dot and adding the carbon skeleton from a haloalkane on to the N in lieu of, an, of a H. And once all the H's are gone, it sticks and there's nowhere further to go. Now this, to finish, is uh, not an amine. We call it a quaternary ammonium salt. And uh, these were haloalkanes that are reacting with. It was bromoalkanes in the example here. So uh, the full name of this thing would be uh, a bit awkward. It'd be like ethyl trimethyl ammonium bromide. Remember that ammonia, NH3, ammonium, NH4+. This is ionic. has a much higher melting and boiling point than all the other organic molecules that we've drawn because it's ionic. It has an ionic, ionic lattice structure in it. Anyway, I hope uh, at least part of that was helpful. Maybe go and practice that for yourselves a little bit now.